Hello everybody, Jake Raby here, Flat 6 Innovations. I want to welcome you back to another RenVision technical video. Now this is actually going to be the first in another technical video series called a focus on IMS bearing failure. Our focus on bore scoring has been a great technical video series. We've had hundreds of thousands of views of that video series, and the reason why people like it so much is because it's based on first-hand, direct information that we've derived here at Flat 6 Innovations, and it's backed up by fact. This is a textbook focus on IMS bearing failure. It doesn't get any more factual or any more epic than this particular car. Why is this a perfect car? The main reason is that the owner of this vehicle did everything right. Model year 2003, 29,000 original miles, original purchaser, and all the service records. Perfect car facts. The car is epically perfect in every way. I've tried to find something wrong with it and I can't. The only problem with this car is it suffers from a broken heart. The owner of this car had no idea what intermediate shaft bearing failure was, IMS bearing failure, you know, whatever acronym or term you want to call it. He didn't know what that was until all of a sudden his engine didn't work anymore. This was not his first Porsche, not his first rodeo, but it was the first time that he had he ever heard the term IMS bearing. And like a lot of people out there, he didn't know what he didn't know. Well, that's the focus of all of these technical video series is to help people understand the dynamics behind these failures and why they occur. Now, this particular car has the 6204 single row intermediate shaft bearing. This car had the engine failed earlier in its life before the Porsche class action lawsuit would have been a perfect class vehicle for that lawsuit. However, it's now 2020, that lawsuit's been over for many years, and this particular individual got no help from anybody that he looked to, the original place where he purchased the vehicle, or anyone else. He reached out to me over a year ago to go over all the things associated with this new failure that he'd had. It took him a year to digest what he wanted to do, and that's not abnormal. This is a lot of money. Our process takes a long time. And it's not abnormal for somebody to take several months or even a year or longer to make the determination about which way they want to go. So the three things that goes through your mind when you have something like this happen is pretty much denial, where, you know, did this really happen to me? Has this really happened? How did this happen? And pretty much during the denial phase, you start looking at some options. You start Googling some things. And I hear this all the time. I'm going to consider my options with this. And what you have to understand is there may be some options about which way to go, but which of those options have any real depth when it comes to longevity, reliability, and actually addressing the problem at hand. So denial is the first stage associated with most all of the engine failures that I deal with in my consulting here at Flat 6 Innovations. So the second part is deliberation. The deliberation of what am I going to do, okay? In this particular owner's case, he was the original first purchaser of the car. I have the window sticker for the car. It has every option known to man. It is beautiful in every way epically maintained in every way, and he deliberated for a solid year about which way to go. Finally, in the end, his deliberation led him to sell the vehicle in its current state with a broken heart at the rear of the vehicle. And he's a PCA member, and he actually advertised this car for sale on the PCA classifieds. Now, the day after he did that, he called me 
because it, as soon as it went on the PCA classifieds, I had several people saying, hey, there's a car out there, there's a car out there, do you know anybody needs it? And, you know, I didn't really think anything about it. At the same time, I didn't connect the dots where he had called us before. Pretty much every engine in North America that fails, at some point in time, we are going to get a phone call about that engine. When you're the leader, that's what happens. No big deal. We have no problem consulting with anybody about which way to go as they are deliberating. So that next day, he gives me a call, and he says, I talked to you last year. He describes the car again. I connect his advertisement on the PCA Classifieds with what he was telling me, and I say, okay, this is the car that's advertised for sale on PCA Classifieds. He confirmed that. I said, okay, great. At the same time, I asked him, why did it take you a year to, to make up your mind? He said, I just didn't know which way to go. And he was still trying to work this out to see if he could get any leverage with dealers or anybody else like that because this failure occurred at only 29,000 miles, albeit 17 years after the manufacture of the vehicle, okay? So his deliberation led him our way after a solid year of trying to figure out which way to go. And I'm going to help you understand his story as we move forward in this video series. Now, the third step when we have a failure like this or when you have any type of not positive scenario, I believe, in life, is the decisive moment. It took a year of that deliberation and denial for him to determine that in his decisive moment, he was going to pull chocks and he was going to sell the car as it is. So I'm not in the business of buying and selling these cars. It's not what I do. But I saw an opportunity to take this vehicle and use it as a perfect poster child to help other people avoid the same misfortune that this particular original owner had. So I did purchase this car from him. And I'm going to take you through all the steps that we go through here at Flat Six Innovations to turn this engine from a bone stock 3.6 liter 996 Mark II into one of my R40 4 liter stage two street and track performer engines. So what are we gonna do and how are we gonna get started? Well, first off, I never trust somebody else's diagnosis because over my years of experience with these cars, I've learned that there's 31 modes of failure for this particular engine family. Several of those have the same sort of symptoms as an IMS bearing failure. Broken timing chain is a very good one that is known to afflict this particular engine. Now, I have not done anything to this car at this point. I haven't even checked the oil. We've done nothing. It came straight from a dealer's lot, went back to the original owner's garage, sat there for a year while he deliberated. And now, I'm going to start this whole video series by performing an invasive diagnostic that's going to help us determine whether or not the dealership made the right call on the IMS bearing failure or if something else has stricken this engine. So being the 6204 single row bearing, it is the most problematic of all the IMS bearings that are basically part of the M9X engine family. That started in 1997 and went through 2008. There were three variations when it comes to IMS bearings. You had the early dual row, which is very robust, but now these days it's starting to fail in higher quantities because of time and service. The newest one of those cars is now 20 years old. The 6204 single row bearing, which is what this particular Mark II 996 has, basically started in mid-2000, went up to early 2005 or in that neighborhood. And then we have what we call the M97 IMS bearing, came out in 2005, went through the end of the M9X production in 2008. That bearing is by far the most robust and the least failure prone. So there is a great probability that the dealership that diagnosed this is correct because of what bearing is in this engine and the low mileage that's on it and all the things that we constantly hear about here at Flat Six Innovations. At the same time, we're not going to take that as, as God's word. We're basically just going to disassemble this engine, do an invasive inspection, determine what has happened, and I want to show you what goes into the diagnostics of 
determining if you have an IMS bearing failure or if you have some other failure that is confusingly similar. We're going to have probably 10 or 12 parts of this series with videos released probably every week or so. You want to make sure you like and subscribe to our channel so you get notifications when we do release those new videos. Once we are completely done with all the things associated with this particular car, it has new life with a R40 Flat 6 Innovations Stage 2 Street and Track Performer engine. Then we've already worked out a deal with the good folks at Bring a Trailer to help us sell this particular car on one of the Bring a Trailer auctions. BAT, as we call it, has become a great resource for selling Porsche cars and all kinds of unique vehicles. I recently sold one of my British Army tanks with Bring a Trailer. I was very pleased with the transaction and the new owner couldn't love it more. So if you're interested in seeing how to properly and thoroughly diagnose engine failure with probable IMS bearing failure, you want to follow this video series, a focus on IMS bearing failure. At the same time, if you are interested in seeing what it takes to reconstruct an engine to a stage two, 4 liter R40 flat 6 innovation street and track performer, you want to follow this video series. If you think you might want to purchase this 2003 Porsche 996 Mark II with that stage 2 R40 engine, then you might want to follow along with this and go bid on this vehicle when we sell it with Bringer Trailer Auctions. So thank you for joining us here on RenVision. Want to make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. We are devoted to giving you facts and first-hand direct technical experience. So back in 1999, my very first technical video was shot. And that's the Volume 8 Bug Me video where we actually built an engine that would be fitted into a Porsche 914 or an old Volkswagen bus. That's still available today. Way back then, things had not come nearly as far as they have today. Matter of fact, I remember when we first had the capability of putting those old Volume 8 videos onto a DVD. So today, 20 years later basically, we're sitting in a studio where we have been able to collect over 100 hours of raw footage that it takes to put together these engines. We were able to take 100 hours of our lives and devote to sharing all this information with you at home be it a do-it-yourselfer or a professional alike. A few other facts about this educational video series, which is what this actually is, is a series of episodes that take you through what it takes to think about building an engine and then carry out the process from A to Z. Cleanliness, special tools, all of those things are covered. We take the question marks out of the toolbox. So that 100 hours of video was collected from no less than six different cameras at multiple camera angles. So we're not just sitting there sharing one camera angle with you. I, I believe in high attention to detail and I believe in precision. Furthermore, I like to have surgical precision when it comes to building an engine. And that's what I'm sharing with you in the educational series to support the M9X engine. What makes this educational series so unique is the fact that this information is all derived from my head and my hands and also from those who work under me here at Flat 6 Innovations. A lot of my technicians, my engine builders, have learned things about these engines over the years that I have not been exposed to. So this is a collaborative effort where I've taken the brain trust of every individual that I can possibly reach out to in our facilities as well as at LN Engineering and it encompasses this entire video series that is truly educational. It is a way that we can tell you what you need to know in the simplest ways possible to have an experience with this engine that is going to be positive if you just follow our instructions. If you have the desire to understand what makes the M96 engine tick and all the things that we've learned about how to put these engines together that has not come from a workshop manual, then you need to purchase this particular educational video series. It's that hands-on, first-hand experience that I'm able to convey to you that makes the difference. No, I didn't sit there and read a workshop manual. Matter of fact, there's not one in this entire studio today.
There hasn't been one here while we've been filming this. Everything has been resource material we have created from scratch and show you all the things you need to know to do this job successfully yourself.